withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Ask your neighbor or the person next to you, what time is it? What time is it? And ask him, say, God's time. God's time. Amen? Amen. All right, so what we're going to talk about tonight is time management. Ephesians 5th chapter, verses 15 through 16. So that means the time that we have, God wants us not only to use it wisely, but we want us to use it to do his what? Will. Will. To do his what? Will. Will. Turn real quick to the book of Matthew. God says not only do we want us to use time, he understands about time, but he says he wants us to use it, what? Wisely. wisely. To do what? His will. his will. To do his will. Not our will, but his will. Real quickly in the book of Matthew, 6th chapter, 33rd verse. We never say check. Yeah. And it reads, but seek ye what? First. Seek ye what? First. It sounds like a priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? All things. Some things. All. All things will be added unto you. Hmm. So that's a priority. If that's a priority to God, God said make that a priority that you what? Seek ye what? First. first the kingdom of God. Yes. That's good. Everything else comes automatically if you seek me first. So, to seek God first, to do the will of God, and he already explained to us in the book of Ephesians not to use our time unwisely. In other words, don't be a waste of time. But to take that time, use it wisely enough to seek me first. Correct? Correct. Check. To do my will, and everything else is automatic. Glory. That's it. Glory. That's it. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a priority to me. Thank you, Lord. Let's turn real quick to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 16 chapter. Is this good to anybody? Amen. Amen. God's going to break down to us how to use time wisely. Amen. Book of Proverbs. We're going to go to 16 chapter. Third verse. When you never say check. And it reads, book of Proverbs 16, chapter, third verse, it said, Commit thy works unto the Lord. Now, real quick, take that word works and put time. Amen? Amen. Let me read it again. Commit thy time unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be what? Woo! Glory. Now, y'all just heard Pastor say about communication. Ask yourself. How's your communication with God? My, my, my. How much time do you give God? Do you pray in the morning when you wake up? Throughout the day by every single situation? We pray about food. We say our prayers before we lay down and go to sleep. And it seems so one-sided. You know, imagine being a, a parent of a child. And every time your child wants something, they just come in. Mama, I need this. Dad, I need this. Daddy just had blah, 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 blah. And all they're doing is just talking to you and talking at you, but they're not listening to what you're saying. That's a one-sided conversation. Man. Ask yourself, how often do I pray about any and everything? How much time do I actually spend getting into God's presence all so right. I can hear him? All right. Hmm? Commit thy works. Commit thy time. Unto the Lord, and our thoughts should be what? Established. That means everything that you need to know, you question about, you pray about it, and guess what? It'll be established. Lord. Why? Because it lines up with the will of God. Oh, Amen. If you spend time with a person, the more you spend time with that person, the more you know that person. You know that person's will, their characteristics, you know how that person operates, you know everything about that person because you're spending so much time with them. So guess what? When something comes up in your life, you already know the thoughts are established because you know the will of God and how he operates. Right? Amen. So the more time you spend with God, the more you know him. 
Sup with him. Amen. Seek him. Diligently and you should what? Find him. A lot of us say, well, you know what? I ain't got I, my time stretched out. So so many hours in a day. You know, I gotta go to work, I got I gotta have another job, I gotta get the kids from daycare, I'm in school, I got these other things going on. And it, we get so distracted, we go, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm tired. I, I got nothing left. So, you know, I come to church on Sundays. Maybe Bible study, shoot, that's good enough. And we get caught up in that traditional ritual, Pastor say, of doing that, that really our time is spread so far over that it's a lot of waste of time. And God says, I want you to use time wisely and manage it by first seeking me, the kingdom of God, making me the number one priority. You make me the number one priority, everything else falls into place. Amen, Amen check. Yeah. Turn real quick to the book of James. So, book of James, fourth chapter, 13 verses. We there? And it reads, go to what? Yeah. Now. Now, not the future. Don't go back in the past. He said, go to what? Yeah. Now. Today. Yeah. Right now. now. And then he says, today or tomorrow, ye will go into such a city and continue there a year to buy and sell and to get gain. Hmm. Stop right there. How many of us get up and say, well, you know, I gotta go to work tomorrow. I gotta go to work. I can't, I can't, I can't make it to Bible study. I can't go to church because I gotta go to work. I gotta take care of my livelihood. I gotta go buy, trail, <laughs> trade, and gain. <laughs> so we make that a priority, even right today. But look what he says after that. He says, whereas ye know not what shall be tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is not here yet. But what you do now affects tomorrow. tomorrow. A lot of us Some are of living 40% in the past, 40% in the future, and we're only giving 20% to the now. My God. My God. Now, now, now look at this demonstration. 40% in the past, 40% in the future, what does this look like? Cross. Glory. Oh my God. Everything God died for. The past and the future. So we can live in the what? Now. Amen. Thank you. 100%. Thank you, Lord. Thank in the now. 100% in the now. Yes, Lord. God already took care of the past. Even took care of the future. Yeah. Glory. Now it's on you. Now. My God. These water bottles demonstrate our time. 25% priority. Box number one. Box number two. 25% of what's important but not necessary. Box number three. What's necessary but not important. Box number four was not important and not necessary. And I already gave illustrations. That what we value the most is so important to us that we put in box number one, which is our parole. Box number two was important to us, but not really a necessity. It's important, but not in, you can live without it. That goes in box number two. Box number three, What's a necessity, like our job, but it's not important. Wow. Okay? Yeah. Box number four. What's not important and not a necessity. Just our lust and what we want. All right? So let's go with box number four. Let's take 50%. Box number four. Put it in box number two. Check? Check. Yeah. Let's take the other half, put it in box number three. So we have priority, what's important but not necessary, what's necessary but not important, and we totally eliminate what's not necessary and not important. You seeing how we're freeing up time? Amen. Time management? Now, we're going to take What's important but not necessary, 
we're going to take one water bottle, put it in priority. We're also going to take half and put it in box number two. That guy still with me? Lord. Check. 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 Priority. What's important, but not necessary. What's necessary, but not important. Correct? Correct. And we have totally eliminated what's not necessary and not important. Box number two. We take half and put it in box number one. Glory. What's important and necessary, which is priority. Right. What's important to us, but not necessary. And what's necessary, but not important. Work, other issues, our children, family, God. Glory. See how much time I have now to spend with God? Amen. Because if I spend time with God, the more time I spend with Him, everything else falls in place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Time management. Amen. But remember, I started off 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, which gave up 100% of my time. There was no room for anything else. So many hours in a day, correct? But God said, use it what? Wisely. So I got to start eliminating some stuff. What's not important and not necessary in my life? The club. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Listen to that. Sleeping all day. Mm. Huh? Amen. Watch out. Amen. I start eliminating that time. Then I go to the next box. Okay. Now what's necessary but not important? Okay, my job is necessary, but it's not there. Okay, and, and, and you gotta see what I'm doing. Everybody can do it with your own personal life. Glory. And then you go to the next thing. And then you get to the point, you say, man, look at all this free time I got now that I can dedicate to God. Spend more time with Him. Get to know Him. Get to do His will. And trust me, God will honor that. And you'll be surprised how everything will make your life just much smoother. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, that's the word that God has given me. Amen. Amen. Time Lord. management. Amen. What time is it? God's time. Amen. 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 Let us take this opportunity to welcome you to celebrate Abundant Life Fellowship Church, where the power of God is present and the Spirit of God flows. You can be blessed and you can receive your miracle today.